I asked him uh, why he was able to issue an arrest warrant for Mr. Putin and is unable to do so for the Prime Minister of Israel. Breaking news. South Africa's Minister of International Relations and Cooperation, Naledi Pandor, has sparked controversy with her recent comments regarding the International Criminal Court's warrants for political leaders. In a recent interview, Pandor questioned why there is a warrant for Russian President Vladimir Putin but not for Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Let us watch this clip and please share your thoughts in the comments below. Uh, the case before the ICJ regarding what we uh, believe is Israel's genocide in the war on Gaza. Uh, some of you would now know that at a special cabinet meeting that we held on the 8th of December last year, we decided as government that South Africa should institute legal proceedings at the International Court of Justice against Israel for, we believe, violating its obligations under the Geneva Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide. You would all be aware of some of the facts surrounding this war in Gaza. Recent figures by Oxfam indicate that the average daily killing of Palestinians by the Israeli military since October 7th exceeds the daily death toll of any major conflict in recent years. That the deaths of children are almost incomparable, both in terms of actual numbers killed and the rate at which children are, have been killed. More journalists, you would know better than we do, have been killed in Gaza in the last hundred days than were killed during the Second World War and the Vietnam War. So having looked at a range of information and data before us, Cabinet was persuaded by the sheer immorality and illegality of the actions of the Israeli government that we had to act. There was consensus in that meeting that South Africa should approach the highest judicial organ of the United Nations to seek an end to the mass killing of Palestinians and to stop the wholesale destruction of civilian infrastructure, including residential buildings, hospitals, schools, bakeries, water and electricity facilities. From the outset, our concerns have been centered on the values and principles of our constitution, a constitution which places a premium on the right to life, the right to human dignity, and which sets out the human rights which should be enjoyed by all persons. So following the cabinet decision, we then had to work very hard to ensure that we were able to institute and submit our application. We didn't have Christmas, did we? No. On December 29th, South Africa filed its application to institute proceedings against Israel, as well as our request for the court to determine a set of provisional measures. You're all aware the matter was heard in The Hague on the 11th and 12th of January this year, particularly at that time in relation to the request for provisional measures. The substantive matter of whether genocide has been permitted will be addressed in the merits aspect of the case. On January 26, the court delivered its order on South Africa's request for provisional measures. Whilst not all the provisional measures that were requested by South Africa were granted, crucial measures that will contribute to the protection of Palestinians were granted. The court was near unanimous in its decisions, in its order for provisional measures. These included one, that Israel shall take all measures within its power to prevent all acts of genocide as contained in Article 2 of the Genocide Convention, including, and I quote, the killing of members of a group causing serious bodily or mental harm to members of the group, 
deliberately inflicting on the group conditions of life calculated to bring about its physical destruction in whole or in part and then imposing measures intended to prevent births within the group. Second, Israel must prevent and punish direct and public incitement to commit genocide. And I must say with this particular point, the court went into some detail with evidence of statements of incitement that have emanated from leading government officials within the administration uh, of uh, Israel. Third, that Israel is required to take effective measures to provide urgently needed basic services and humanitarian assistance. Fourth, that it must ensure effective measures are taken to prevent the destruction of evidence and ensure its preservation. And fifthly, that Israel is required to provide a report to the court on the measures it has taken to give effect to these provisional measures within one month. While South Africa had called for the suspension of Israeli military operations in Gaza, the court did not grant this provisional measure. The decision overall by the court marks, we believe, a decisive victory for international law and a significant milestone in the search for justice for the people of Palestine. It also affirms the importance of global governance institutions, including organs of the United Nations. It remains vital for us as member states to ensure that we respect and implement the decisions of the court. And I suppose what confronts us now is what do we do if there is no implementation? And that is the question all nations must answer today because it is a body of the United Nations that has set out these provisional measures. It's not the South African government or South Africa on its own. It is the International Court of Justice. And if its orders are not respected, what does this mean for every other government that commits atrocities against a people? This is the big question that confronts us as the global community today. The finding, we think, also makes it clear that it is plausible that genocide is taking place against the Palestinian people in Gaza. You would have heard the court's uh, president actually saying this. Third states must therefore also act independently and immediately to prevent genocide by Israel and to ensure that they, as third states, are not themselves involved in violation of the Genocide Convention by aiding or assisting in the commission of genocide. This necessarily imposes an obligation on all states to seize funding and facilitating Israel's military actions, which as the court has indicated, are plausibly genocidal. As South Africa, we will continue to do everything within our own power to preserve the existence of the Palestinian people as a group. We will do what we can to seek the ending of all acts of apartheid and genocide against the Palestinian people and to walk with them toward the realization of their collective right to self-determination. Because, as former President Nelson Mandela declared so stoutly, our freedom is incomplete without the freedom of the Palestinian uh, people. And uh, we can't uh, ennoble President Mandela in some aspects and then neglect other aspects of his political uh, beliefs. The UN peace and security architecture, as we can see today, is clearly not able to give effect 
to the right to self-determination of the Palestinian people and has, of course, dismally failed to protect them from grave war crimes and the threat of genocide, which has necessitated concerned states to turn to the judicial institutions of the United Nations. If we fail through the judicial institutions, we must ask what protects us now. South Africa welcomes the support expressed by several countries and we encourage those states that are so inclined to approach the court to intervene in the proceedings in support of our case so as to send a strong message to the international community that the situation in the Gaza Strip is indefensible. Several countries spoke to me at the uh, summits uh, in Uganda indicating their intention uh, to take these steps. But I am still waiting for the uh, public action. But there are a number that have indicated a commitment to join us. Um, you mentioned the, the enforcement question, which is obviously very central, because as you point out, if there, if there isn't enforcement, then the use of law to, to you know, embark or try and engage on contentious issues is essentially useless. What are South Africans' options on this? And given that, you know, the United States has made its allyship of Israel very overt um, and has actually condemned our cases, amongst other things, quote-unquote, meritless, it is being seen as an almost certainty that if this is enforced by the Security Council, they will exercise their right to obey to. What do you think the implications of that will be for international law and for the people of Palestine? Um, we obviously have a circumstance now where UNRWA's funding has been cut because of these allegations that nine or 13 of their staff members of a component of 30,000 were involved in, in the Hamas attack. Um, and that obviously has serious humanitarian implications. What is South Africa is, is South Africa considered what what the country can do in those in those circumstances, and then finally we've seen um, a number of attacks on South Africa, um, including this allegation that somehow the ANC had received funding from Iran, and this was the basis upon which this case was brought. Um, what do you make of that kind of? concerted campaign again you know in terms of you know an attempt to portray the the case as somehow financially driven by Iran and how do you think it should be addressed if at all thank you because you asked about six questions I know she's, I just, she's, she's done this. <laughs> Sophie from the SAPC minister the president yesterday at the ANC Lekhotla, when he was wrapping up, he warned uh, the ANC and its allies that uh, there's going to be a backlash. And he went as far as pointing out that there's a likelihood that there will be interference with elections. As government, have you picked up something in relation to intelligence around that? The other question is, in relation to today, the Security Council will be looking at a report on humanitarian crisis from Mr. Griffith, but it will also look at uh, this ICJ. And I saw South Africa is part of uh, countries that will deliver statement. What will be South Africa's message? And do you think waiting a month for the report by Israel, while on the other hand there's heavy bombardment and loss of life, is something that the Palestinians can afford? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Her Excellency, uh, now Israel, it seems uh, it has um, a special Sorry, uh, who, definition. Who are you? Dawood Ali Al Arabi TV. Uh, now Israel, uh, I, I think Israel now has uh, its own uh, definition to the ICJ order. 
and the West too. We see uh, last days the uh, some uh, Western com uh, uh, countries they are stop funding the UNRWA in this very difficult times. And we see yesterday or yesterday before uh, special forces wearing a civilian uh, clothes and they stormed uh, a hospital and they killed three injured Palestinians. Will uh, South Africa will add all this to the case of IC, uh, ICG? Thank you. Uh, Karin de Plessis, I work for the Africa Report. Um, I also have a few questions. <clears throat> uh, the first question is the d diplomatic ramifications of the ICJ case that South Africa brought. And um, have there been any concrete evidence of any ramifications? I mean, I see that Israel isn't buying grapes from South Africa anymore. They cancelled the grapes and the and flights, um, the uh, airline cancelled flights. Have there been any other sort of concrete ramifications? Um, I think, uh, uh, Karen, that uh, we are pointing to the dilemma uh, that uh, the global community has. The uh, Genocide Convention was enacted following the Second World War, and its intention was to uh, ensure that never again would we see the atrocities that were part of the Holocaust against Jewish people in Europe. This was the intention of the convention. Those who were to be the beneficiaries of the convention are today the ones who we believe are committing genocide. And what confronts the world is to marshal the ability to ensure that the stipulations of the genocide are actually observed. So I think this question is not one for South Africa. I believe South Africa has done what it can, and now the global community is the one that must answer the question. Do these conventions mean anything, or do we now have a world in which there's open license, where you can act as you will against any vulnerable uh, group? I believe it uh, fits very much uh, into uh, the discussion of uh, UN reform that we have been trying for so many years to have as a concrete deliberation with a set of proposed uh, changes. And we've not been able to have text-based negotiations on a proposed framework. I think now is the time for us to push for this. One of the things that I believe uh, we should uh, insert into our deliberations at the Security Council open debate is the need for peace enforcement, for the UN to actually be cajoled, forced, persuaded to focus on enforcement and not only on monitoring, which it has done for so many, many uh, uh, decades. And in terms of, of further options, we must continue to engage friends. We do have supporters across the world. We must continue talking to them. We need to form a bulwark of support in uh, action supporting the cause of the people of Palestine. So countries such as Ireland, uh, structures in the United States of America, we need to engage all over the world and begin to form a force that would advocate action, particularly action toward a negotiated two-state uh, solution. I don't think we should leave matters as they are. We really need uh, to be very active as South Africa. Um, I have spoken uh, to the representatives of Palestine uh, and I have indicated to them that the campaign must get more active from now that the ICJ is not a, the victory that we want. It's a partial, it's important, it's decisive, but the major work we need to do is to ensure the real protection of the people of Palestine, but most particularly that we have the eventuality of a, of a state of Palestine where people enjoy freedom, justice, 
and human rights. This is the task uh, that we need to undertake, and we must caucus, we must persuade, we must initiate. So whatever forum we're in, we need to actively agitate and work uh, for support. On uh, UNRWA, I think one of the things we're going to see is all sorts of modifications of negative action against the people of Palestine. And you're going to see it every day. There'll be a different intervention which seeks to undermine, hence our conviction, that genocide is underway. And whatever means to achieve it are available to Israel, which we shouldn't forget is an occupying power with a duty to protect those that it has occupied. So this genocide totally contradicts the role and responsibility of an occupier. We have to lift out these issues through yourselves in the media, being honest about how you report and not reporting according to who uh, you're funded by, but actually telling the truth of this situation. Because many are dishonest in their reporting. Very few mention the fact that Palestine is occupied. Very few mention right of defense. It's right of defense, but a go against those who've attacked you, not every civilian, which is the case currently. So we need to have an objective and open reporting, particularly us South Africans. I think you're probably one of the most objective press in the world, and you need to use that power uh, to, to good effect. Uh, if you are, you know, really the children of Mandela, your task is to seek to change the world not to have it the same. So I think we need a, a, a global campaign in the interest of the people of Palestine. And what South Africa should do with the relief agency is, is to really try and secure humanitarian support. We should be speaking to the Gulf states. We should speak to other African countries that have the ability to uh, contribute we should look to our own resources. We should support the agency to provide humanitarian aid. We can't leave things as they are. And whatever we're able to provide, we should make it available. So I think there should be a massive drive to say to those powerful countries that have stopped funding, even though uh, those accused workers... Uh, have been suspended and investigations are underway. Again, you have collective punishment. We need to object to that, but we should also look at working with the world to secure uh, funding from the South uh, to assist uh, this entity. Um, on funding from Iran, I haven't had a chance to speak to the ANC to say whether they got funding from Iran, uh, but I thought the story said that Iran has paid the legal team. Isn't that what said something like that? Um, now, as far as I know, the legal team hasn't been paid yet. Uh, and I've not seen an offer from Iran uh, for, for such payment. But I know uh, from the WhatsApps I get and what is said about me, uh, that the onslaught uh, can be very fierce. You know, I've been called an ISIS member, uh, I'm a Hamas uh, adherent, uh, I hide under the cupboard, Iran is my master, you know, all sorts of rubbish. And as I've said before, insults are the last refuge of a scoundrel, and we will get lots of attacks. But it's fine, we can be attacked, but we know what we are focused upon is the truth. The people of Israel are suffering from a form of colonized occupation, which is really something South Africans should never accept. So there's no funding from Iran. It's merely an allegation, and we expect even more allegations uh, to come our way. Uh, all sorts of things. I was speaking to Minister Kele, and I'm wondering, do I have enough protection? Uh, we're expecting all sorts. So I think uh, we should just uh, be aware that there'll be a lot of misinformation 
um, a lot of, you know, fake news. There was a some thing on um, X, X eh? uh, which says that uh, uh, I'm saying, stand up, you know, you Arab nations. Why are you so quiet? Why are you leaving it to us? And it's as though I'm insulting uh, uh, Gulf uh, nation states. But it, I never said anything like that. So, you know, uh, I'm expecting all sorts of things. Um, I think the president uh, uh, was in a realistic manner alerting uh, the ANC leadership and the alliance to be aware that there'll be this kind of mischief. Uh, we've seen it occur elsewhere. And uh, he said it may even straddle into our own national processes in the country. So we need to be alert. For example, I'm hearing now in the media that uh, people are saying uh, it's likely that we'll have an election that will have contested uh, results. We've had excellent election administration. There's no suspicion of incapacity of the Independent Electoral Commission. Uh, never has been. Why suddenly now? So it's all part of a pact. And uh, we need to just be uh, very alert to it. And we must have confidence in our ability to manage our own business. On the uh, Security Council, indeed, uh, the matter uh, is going to be discussed as an open uh, session. So it will not just be the 15 Security Council members. Other uh, member states that are interested uh, will be invited and, and will be able to indicate uh, their interest in making a statement. And South Africa will certainly take up uh, the opportunity. Uh, I think it's important that we follow all the stipulations of the ICJ, that uh, they've said a month for a report. Let us uh, have that uh, a month. Let's see what report Israel will produce. And let's submit our own commentary, which will include the evidence of what we have seen since the ICJ ruling, because we cannot hide uh, what we see and what we know uh, is happening. Um, I've spoken on the funding of UNRWA, and uh, uh, I think the hospital attack, the attacks on hospital facilities totally go against the grain of the ICJ uh, ruling. But all public service institutions have been attacked in the course of this war in Gaza. Uh, and it's something that again offends the provisions of the Genocide on Con uh, uh, Convention. Because if you destroy hospitals, you're saying injured people must get no help that people who need medical treatment must not have it. So essentially you're sentencing people to death by virtue of you know, your, your activities. And the shocking thing of the hospital attack was going in dressed as though you are medical personnel and yet you have murderous uh, intent. Uh, as we said uh, in our case, the years uh, that we've had of great concern about uh, the atrocious experience of uh, people of Jewish extraction uh, under the Holocaust allowed a condition of impunity to develop, that whatever Israel does, we cannot uh, uh, quarrel with it. We need to change this attitude. because It's clear we've created a platform in which atrocity is made to seem legal, and it cannot be accepted. Um, on uh, uh, Karin's uh, uh, questions, well, Karin, I feel sorry for Israeli people that they don't get the delicious grapes of South Africa uh, because we have part the best fruit in the world, as far as I'm concerned. On El Al, I don't think there were major airline uh, uh, service into South Africa. So I think a lot of noise is being made. I saw somebody lifting down our flag. I don't know where it was. You know, so it's just to make us afraid uh, that this is the international reaction. South Africans shouldn't be uh, afraid. Of course, we mustn't be uh, foolish. You know, we mustn't be careless uh, uh, in how we act because we have uh, our own national interest uh, that we must have uh, regard to. But the uh, concern about our national interest mustn't make us 
a partner to atrocity. That would never be acceptable uh, uh, to us. So uh, in terms of uh, um, trade, uh, let's look for other trade partners. Let's look at East Asia, for example. We've just successfully managed to return uh, our sale of halal beef to Saudi Arabia, and this is exciting. We're increasing citrus exports to the UAE. We've negotiated an excellent trade agreement for beef with Malaysia. Let's now look at Indonesia. Let's really grow uh, our sector, particularly in the halal food industry, and use it as a platform for expanding uh, trade. So I think there are opportunities and uh, we need to take them up. Thank you, Minister. Uh, I was hoping you have covered all the questions that might be asked. So we'll, we'll take this round, uh, Minister, and then uh, we have questions that we've received uh, also via uh, WhatsApp, which we'll take immediately after this uh, round. Thank you, Minister. Starting with you, Timbi. Good afternoon. My name is Timbi Lekele. I'm with Bloomberg News. Minister, you spoke with uh, Secretary Blinken on the eve of the ruling, and obviously both the US and the UK have close relationships, uh, close cooperation with South Africa. Do you believe those two nations are complicit in the acts being carried out in Gaza? Are you still actively engaging them with a view to encouraging calls for a ceasefire or implementation of the ruling given their influence over Israel? Um, and then finally, maybe just on BRICS, can you give an update with regard to the status of the attendees who has formally accepted or declined, and is there a deadline for, for those responses? Thank you. Um, you... Well, okay, sorry. Sorry, 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 <laughs> sorry. I'm Can you use the mic to, next to you? I'm told they are working. Thank you. Uh, Turkish, uh, Turkish Minute representing uh, Minister, Turkish Foreign Ministry issued a statement support to your genocide case, and Turkish President Erdogan uh, had a call with President uh, Ramaphosa uh, to support your application. Uh, so, uh, but uh, has South Africa's ambassador in Ankara, Turkey, requested government of Turkey to intervene and support uh, South Africa's case, uh, submission to, to uh, ICJ, like an official like Germany is supporting Israel? And second question, can you please share with us the content of discussion that happened between you and uh, between you and Special Envoy to Western Sahara today? Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Salailo um, from Salam Media. Uh, my question also uh, touches on our diplomatic ties with Israel. Um, you know, especially since the ICJ case and where they currently stand. Uh, and also, what is the latest uh, regarding downgrading our consulate in Tel Aviv and also the status of uh, the Israeli embassy here in Pretoria? Nawa Suleiman from TFT Arabic. Uh, my question, I have about three questions to ask. What is the next step for South Africa regarding the ICJ ruling? And how much will the government extend its support to Palestinian? Will South Africa be ready for any repercussion from the West after the ICJ ruling? And lastly, is there any talk with Hamas regarding the hostages and ceasefire? Thank you very much. The last two points to Diana and Yusuf. Over to Diana. Uh, all right, thank you. Uh, Diane Hawker from Deutsche Welle. Um, the question relates to something that you mentioned um, earlier, Minister, where you said that you'd received a lot of uh, commitments and, and um, sort of words of support from other countries. Um, in terms of concrete support, what is South Africa hoping to receive from allies or other members of the, of the BRICS um, group? when it comes to the longer term case, because we know that it will it will take quite a long time to finalize. At the risk of repeating uh, possibly a question that you've answered already, uh, South Africa had made it clear that in the days leading after the ruling that they believe the ICJ ruling effectively ordered a ceasefire and for Israel to stop attacking Gaza. Is this still the official, official stance? of the legal team and the government? And do you believe that the ICJ's preliminary ruling ordered an effective ceasefire? And as a follow-up to that, do you believe that the court 
uh, had ordered a ceasefire and clearly that and clearly that hasn't happened. And are you now saying uh, that Israel is in breach of the ruling? And what steps will South Africa take either at the UN or the ICJ to confront this apparent disregard for the ruling by Israel? Thank you, Minister. This, those were the questions. Uh, okay. I think we are done with, uh, with the room and then we'll take care uh, after Minister has responded to the questions from social media. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, on the uh, U.S. Secretary of State, um, well, I'm not a court, not a judicial uh, office. It would be the ICJ that would decide as to culpability and who and what. Um, but uh, I would draw notice to the fact that uh, despite the uh, sentiment expressed of a baseless uh, case or m without merit uh, case following the ICJ ruling, the statement was that this reflects uh, positions expressed by President Biden around a ceasefire. I don't know if you saw that. So it was no longer meritless it reflects what President Biden has said. I found that uh, quite uh, interesting. In our conversation with the Secretary of State, uh, he did re-emphasize uh, their strong belief uh, that a ceasefire uh, is necessary, but to them it's a temporary ceasefire for humanitarian purposes, not a permanent end. He also stressed uh, uh, that America uh, will work hard at the two-state solution issue, which they've reiterated in their public uh, uh, statements. Um, <clears throat> Turkey uh, did send out a message indicating support uh, uh, for South Africa's case uh, at the uh, ICJ. <laughs> I would be horrified if our ambassador approached the Turkish government because it's our work here at the head office. We wouldn't ask our ambassadors to do that work for us at this moment. So it is us who are engaging at the foreign minister level uh, and DG with his counterparts uh, on this matter. Um, we uh, are expecting, as I've said, a number of countries to indicate in the next uh, a few uh, days, I think, uh, that they are joining uh, the case uh, by South Africa. Um, and uh, President uh, Erdogan uh, had a call with President Ramaphosa uh, just before the case, indicating that Turkey has said, made a public statement uh, on this matter, but it didn't indicate active uh, uh, joining. It did uh, confirm that Turkey continues to be involved in negotiations uh, toward a ceasefire and the matter of uh, the release of hostages. Um, on the personal envoy, um, I got a briefing on the work that is being done uh, by uh, Mr. Stefan uh, Dumas Dura and some of the approaches that are being discussed on the matter of Sahara. Um, I don't want to say too much because it was very much a, a confidential discussion uh, that I need to reflect upon uh, before I determine what proposals I would make our own government. But it was a very useful discussion. I had written to him, inviting him to meet with me, given our role with respect to uh, Sahara. And he indeed traveled to South Africa and we had a very useful meeting, I thought. Um, you know, this thing of downgrading, I don't know what it means, you know. Um, we pulled out our ambassador uh, from Israel. And following uh, the killing of thousands of Palestinians, we took the decision to close the embassy until we have visible signs that uh, action is being taken uh, toward peace and ending uh, the killings. So our embassy uh, remains closed at this moment. Functional embassies in Ramallah, uh, not the embassy uh, in Tel Aviv. So we don't have the embassy functioning at present. As to the future and uh, final closure, this is something Cabinet has to reflect upon following the National Assembly uh, decision on, on this matter. We haven't had that discussion yet, 
but we do have the resolution uh, from uh, the assembly, uh, which is before uh, a cabinet for a deliberation. Um, I, I've answered, uh, Anwar, the, the question about um, the uh, next steps. The next steps is continue to engage, continue to find avenues for pursuing uh, this matter in the legal uh, institutional domain, but also engage at the level of the United Nations, in BRICS, and in other uh, fora uh, where we have a presence. So really, uh, work on a global uh, campaign to advance the cause of the people of Palestine. And to the people of South Africa, I thank them for the very strong solidarity they've shown to the people of Palestine, and I ask them not to stop the meetings and the marches. The cause has not been won as yet. Um, on discussions with Hamas, no, since the phone call I had with them, which made me the enemy number one uh, of a range of people, we've not had further uh, contact, uh, but I do uh, speak from time to time to colleagues who do have direct contact uh, with them, and they all continue to discuss release of hostages, but ceasefire is critical uh, for, for that to happen. Um, what do we expect on support from other countries? We expect them to join, to submit papers, formally to the ICJ, to say, I don't know, it's a friend of the White House, as, an as an intervening party. This is what uh, we are hoping countries will do. I have some that have confirmed to me, but I don't want to name them until the formal step is taken, because I'd like to see uh, the formal step. So we are we are waiting uh, on that. And then I think uh, we will also be approaching uh, fellow uh, uh, countries, especially in NAM and G77, about the relief agency and what uh, we should continue uh, doing uh, to support. Then, uh, yes, indeed, Ms. Mosamo, I can't uh, be dishonest. Um, I believe that the uh, rulings of the court have been ignored uh, by Israel. Hundreds of people have been killed in the last three or four days. Uh, and clearly Israel believes it has license uh, to do as it wishes. So the world does have to reflect because we're going to come to a point where we have to think, what do we do to stop such acts occur? Not just with Israel, but any party uh, in the world. We know that uh, uh, we were unable to protect uh, Rwanda uh, citizens when they faced a massive uh, uh, slaughter and a genocide. And we are allowing this to happen again uh, right before our eyes on uh, TV screens. South Africa has taken the bold step of approaching the ICJ. We succeeded uh, with the provisional uh, measures application. Uh, I think we now have to look at proposing other measures to the global community, but also securing uh, international solidarity on this matter in support of the Palestinian. And remember that uh, what we seek is a two-state solution. We believe Israel must, exi must exist alongside Palestine with both countries enjoying peace and security. And as we fight, what we're fighting for is the freedom and self-determination of the people of Palestine. Uh, DG, I don't know if you want to talk about some of the legal aspects because you were so directly involved. The poor DG, you know, in the end, I told him to apologize to his wife in December <laughs> because they were on holiday and we were phoning him. I was phoning him at night. Sometimes I wouldn't even see it's 1 a.m., you know, and... Uh, we, we I'll start with that. Uh, uh, did you, they want to know uh, request, what are the next steps sorry, in terms if, if of the request, next phase uh, of, of the some peace of the given the um, uh, judgment by the ICJ the on, next on, on date. Friday? So if I can just ask uh, them, so that what is the status of South Africa's court date uh, to the ICC? Has there been any update on how the court has received South Africa's submission? And has, has there been any feedback as to how this matter is being treated? And then this is for the minister. Does the minister believe that the ICJ order has 
has a bearing will support South Africa's complaint at the ICC? If so, in which way? The last one will is um, how does the minister hope the matter will be received by the Security Council tonight in light of how it has been treated uh, uh, before? Did you, if I can also just take quickly the Ili Maverick uh, <laughs> question. Um, Oh, I'm asked to ask the minister if South Africa is involved in the mediation of the Middle East conflict and what the minister feels about Morocco undermining AU processes by winning the president of the UN uh, Human Rights Council. Those are the questions, uh, Minister, and uh, immediately after the minister and the DG and the DM have responded, we will uh, draw the, this uh, press conference to a close. Thank you, Tutu. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Linda. I'll be quick. So, <clears throat> before I get to the questions that they asked, I think Minister just asked me to, because it is important just to reflect on the UNRWA issue. Um, you know, as Ministers pointed out, that the court found plausible measures, uh, you know, found provisional measures based on the fact that there's a plausible case for genocide. And and if you read the court, if you listen to the, the, the President outlining it, on behalf of the other judges, very, very clearly spoke about the harms that will occur to Palestinians without these provisional measures. Um, so it's important to reflect on the UNRWA matter because it's, as, as Karen has pointed out, is 0.04% of the staff members that are accused, not not, not even proven. Um, but the story behind that needs to be explored and the media should reflect on that because UNRWA has always been challenged, not now. It's always been challenged because UNRWA is a reminder that you've got about 5 million refugees that have been displaced. And the right to return is one of the key issues that's being challenged. So you can't delink it from what's happening in Gaza at the moment and the fact that you want to have a situation by some that Gaza is depopulated, which means that the issue of right to return had to be challenged through UNRWA in this particular way. So we need to locate the attack on UNRWA in that as well. It's not dealing from what is happening in Gaza. So I just wanted to sharpen that one a bit. The question on the next steps. Um, so the we will be called in together with Israel by the registrar in the next couple of days where the registrar will outline the time frames to file papers on the merits. Um, this is called a memorial so they'll give us time frames to provide, to, 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 to do the memorials. And we're hoping that it would be the time frames will be not not longer than six months, but we, we 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 possibly will be able to do a memorial within three months. So that's where the legal team feels that you know that's the time frame that they were looking at. So that's the real next steps. But it you know that is just the first step in a very long process. Um, the ICC update I think is for towards minister. Um, so I will leave it at, at that level, and then I, I think also the Security Council question is also for minister. Um, on the ICC referral, um, we thought it important, since we were uh, in The Hague last week, to meet the ICC. So we met the President of the Council as well as the Prosecutor. And uh, while uh, it's imperative that we don't interfere in processes of independent organs, it is vital that we alert them to our concern at the slow pace of action on matters that we refer to them as urgent matters. The uh, prosecutor assured us that this matter uh, is uh, in hand and is being looked at by his office. He gave us an elaborate uh, explanation as to personnel assignments and the work uh, that the prosecutor uh, is uh, currently uh, uh, undertaking. What I felt he didn't answer me sufficiently on was I asked him uh, why he was able to issue an arrest warrant for Mr. Putin and is unable to do so for the Prime Minister of Israel. He couldn't answer and did not answer that question. But I read into some of what he said that the investigations are still underway and until their conclusion, he cannot pronounce uh, uh, on this matter. So uh, we had have taken the opportunity 
to uh, uh, just establish uh, where we are with respect to the ICC uh, referral. We ask them to um, keep us uh, uh, abreast of developments and that we won't be a nuisance, but we will keep coming back. Um, then you asked about some diplomatic thing. Sorry. The security, there was one before the security council question. Uh, South Africa is involved in the, is South Africa involved in the mediation of the Middle East? Oh, mediation, uh, yes. Mediation, yes, yes. Well, as far as we're aware, there isn't any mediation. There, there are attempts, if he's referring uh, to Qatar uh, and uh, the work they're doing, in discussing uh, the hostage return and ceasefire uh, with Hamas. No, we are not party to uh, those uh, deliberations. We are in touch with our colleagues in Qatar who uh, do keep us informed as to progress with respect to some of uh, the work. Uh, many other nations are involved. Egypt, for example, has been playing a, a, a very important role. And uh, we, we do call for the return of hostages, but we call for an end to the killing. This is extremely important. And for people to have access to all services and goods that allow them to live. Then there was also On the Security Council. Um, well, uh, the current chair has called for an open session where this matter will be debated. I understand there has been some back and forth as to whether there would be a resolution that would be deliberated upon. My sense is there won't be at this point, there isn't sufficient time, but certainly reflection on the ICJ uh, decision and the views of member states uh, would be subject of, of the meeting of the Security Council. I would have thought they'll meet on the evening of the ICJ ruling, but. Uh, uh, they are only meeting. No. There was this one about the Morocco undermining AU processes. Oh yes, yes. Yes. Uh, winning well, the I, I don't know if they undermined uh, the processes of the AU. They were a candidate, as uh, South Africa was, and there was an open uh, vote uh, by member states. Uh, the member states decided to elect uh, Morocco uh, as uh, the chair. And uh, Bafana Bafana did us the joy <laughs> of returning the favor by 2-0. Uh, you know, so this is uh, wonderful. We're very thrilled. And uh, we hope Bafana Bafana are bringing the cup home. But the fact that they're now into the semi-final, for us, that is big. Uh, thank you, uh, Minister. Uh, colleagues, we are mindful of the deadlines, of course, given that we uh, convened this press conference in the afternoon. So um, we have come to the end of it. And uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Minister. Watch more videos like this one? If yes, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We have decided to bring videos on something nobody talks about. African politics, economy, and increasing power. Thanks for watching. And until the next video, stay tuned. Tell us what you think in the comment section. Like and share the video and subscribe so that you don't miss any of our African videos. It's the best way to support us.